Welcome to Navajo County Connection. I'm your host, Daryl Seymour, County Supervisor for District 4. Today we have Doris Clark with us, uh, Navajo County Recorder, and Raylene Richards, the Elections Director. Thank you, ladies, for being with us today. Thank you. You know, it's exciting here to be in the White Mountains, to be here with Navajo County. It's kind of an exciting time of year as we start talking about elections and the process of the people uh, candidates getting excited about running for public office and the different things, but there's a lot of rules and regulations that we all have to follow. So why don't we just uh, start out here, who would like Raylene, do you want to cover a little bit about what the election process is and when people, what offices are going to be open and some of that? Sure, there's a, a few offices that are available for in the county. And if you're going to run for a county seat, you would uh, file with my office. Um, if you want to run for a state position, of course, you would have to file with the S Secretary of State's office. Um, for city and towns, you would file with the uh, city clerk of that city or town. Um, school offices for school districts, you would file with the school, the county school superintendent's office in Holbrook, and not with the uh, district superintendent. It would be with the county superintendent. And then um, any special districts, you would have to file uh, with me. Um, and then if you uh, want to run for a precinct committeeman, you would file with me. Okay, and most of the time it's uh, not just walk into the office, it's a helpful if they maybe call ahead mm -hmm. and make an appointment? Yes, uh, it, it, it's very helpful to, to uh, either call and make sure that I'm there so that I can help them uh, with the process. We also have um, the candidate packets online. They would just go to uh, NavajoCountyAZ.gov and get a packet from there. Okay, and there's a lot of other things. Doris, what are some of the things that you're going to be involved with here when elections get started here? Um, the Navajo County Recorder's Office is in charge of keeping all the voter records. And um, we have over 70,000 um, or seven, 70,000 active and inactive voters. Um, so we have quite a few registered voters. And um, we went to a new system this year. Um, so we, we did away with the old one. And so we're um, encouraging everybody to update the registration if they need to, if they've moved or changed their name, or um, yeah, if they need to, or if they've changed even the way they sign their, you know, um, do their signature, then we want them to update that. Update. Um, we also will play an active role in um, early voting. We, our office takes care of all the early voting requests. So if you're going to be out of town and know that you're not going to be here during election, or if you just want to vote in the comfort of your front room, you're welcome to give us a call. We can send you an early ballot. Um, we do have a lot of people on the permanent early voting list. So the, those are voters that get a ballot every time that there is an election, and we have over 33,000, I believe, that are on that. Yeah. And so if that's the way they want to vote, they can do that. We're in charge of mailing those out as well. Um, we do uh, want to encourage voters to make sure that they sign their ballot when they mail it in, because we have to compare their signature on their ballot envelope to what we have in the system. And, and that, if that matches, then we verify and say that's okay. If there's no signature there to verify, then we can't tabulate that ballot until we get a signature. So, and then we want to encourage everybody, if they choose to vote early, to send in their ballot right away. Um, so it can be counted, it's got to be in our office on election day at 7 p.m. in order to be tabulated. Right. So, and you would be surprised that the day after the election, we will still get some ballots. A week after, two weeks after, a month, a couple months after, we still get ballots. Ballots coming in. Yeah, so we, they need to get them in on election day. And we do have three elections this year. Right that we know of right now. Um, there could be a special election get thrown in there, but we, right now, at this time, we do know of three, of elect three elections. One will be on March 17th is the presidential preference election, 
and then um, in August will be the primary and November will be the general. And you always need to be registered 29 days before an election to be able to vote in that election. Okay. Rayleigh, what are some other important dates that we need to you know, know that when we can take out a, a packet or we need to return packets, uh, the petitions and things that have been signed? Sure, for the August election, there is um, a filing dates, and those filing dates are to be a candidate is between March 7th and April 6th. I cannot take it, your petitions or your nomination any time before March 7th, and I cannot take it after April 6th. Okay. What is the deadline for a candidate to pull a packet up until they can that take deadline a packet of turning everything back up. in? If they think that they can get the required signatures See. in one day, all power to, to them. them. Okay, and those things that way. <laughs> it is kind of a, a lot of things happening, uh, the different elections that we have in different offices. Are you aware of all the offices that are open in the county that's going to be having people run? Currently, it's the uh, for this August election, it's the Board of Supervisors, uh, County Attorney, Superintendent, Recorders, Assessors, Treasurers, um, couple of judges, uh, uh, the Superior Court judges of uh, two, one, two, and three, and on the precinct committeemans. Okay, that's great. Uh, anything uh, else pertaining to where, where somebody can go, where the polling booths are, uh, if somebody wants to work at, you know, volunteer or anything like that? Yes, we definitely encourage anybody who's willing to be a poll worker to call our office at uh, 928-4062 or they can go online and I have a, a form that they can fill out to be a poll worker on my site. Um, we definitely are always looking for poll workers. Volunteers are definitely wanted. Doris, the question I have is like on an early ballot, say somebody's filled out the early ballots, do those ballots ever get started uh, where you're a little ahead of the game, starting to match signatures and count votes before, or is there a deadline as to when you guys can start counting votes? We um, will start verifying the signatures, and then we batch them up, I believe in 50s, mm -hmm. and then it gets sent up to, um, transmitted up to the elections department, the warehouse, and then Raylene will then hire an early board to also work on the, on the ballots verification, and they do theirs. And so I believe that's a question for Raylene, but I think she, um, they don't really start running them until it, yeah, until we've gotten quite a few of them up to her. Right, right. So yeah, there's, I, I hire a board. Uh, it used to be seven days out b uh, before an election. The, the statute changed this last um, session that we can start 14 days out. But um, it all depends on how many early ballots we get back. There's no right. sense me hiring somebody or a bo if six people, six to eight people, um, if we don't have enough work for them to. Right to keep them busy. Now, if I have requested an early ballot, but for some reason I decide I want to go to the poll and vote, is that okay too? Or, or which way, how do I determine that? That is okay, but they need to keep in mind that, you know, that does cost us money to for the envelopes and the printing of the ballots. So we would encourage, <coughs> excuse me, encourage voters if they do request an early ballot to vote the early ballot and mail it in. Um, and, and, and if they want to go to the polls, they can still vote their early ballot at home and go to the polls and drop Turn it off. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so Turn they can do that. that. Right. Or um, they can take their early ballot to the polls and vote it there and leave it and drop it in the box. box okay, yes. that's great. That's a great. Uh, how soon are early ballots mailed out before, say, the August 4th election? When would the early ballots, when would we start seeing them delivered to the residents? Early voting starts 27 days, 26 days before the election. election yeah, so as soon as that day comes, uh, everybody that's on the permanent early voting list, their ballots will go oh, out. Got it, that day. Yeah. Okay. July 8th is, is yeah, that day. That date on mm -hmm. that. What else would you like to cover about Well, there's a, there's a couple of things yeah. I want to uh, uh, 
mentioned is that uh, the March 17th election is a presidential preference election. It's not a primary. And the only people participating in this election is the Democratic Party. Uh, the Republican Party has opted out because they already have their candidate uh, to be represented on the November election. The Libertarian Party has also opted out of this election. They normally, historically, have done their own caucus. And then they, uh, that's, they will bring that to the Secretary of State's office after their caucus and so that they can be on the November ballot. Um, so essentially, only Democratic people registered as Democrats are eligible for this presidential preference election. So I just want to make sure everybody's aware yeah. of that. Okay. And so, um, so those people, because it's not a primary, people that are registered as an independent party, not designated or other, um, are not eligible to vote in this election. However, if they want to participate, I'm not saying change your party. If they want to participate, they need to register 29 days before an before election. On that, site. that that election. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then key dates for other elections then? Um, the other key dates is August 4th. Uh, that has moved up. It used to be the third, third or fourth Tuesday uh, in August. That has moved up this last legislative session past that. And it's going to be um, the first Tuesday in August, which I'm very excited about because <laughs> it gives me more breathing room to right. prepare for the November election. And then the November election is November 3rd. Okay. Um, also, if you don't mind, I have a, a, another thing I want to sure. I'm, I'm proud of is I have been working on a track your ballot. So people can go to my website and there is uh, underneath my picture, there is a says, do we want to track your ballot? They just click on that. It'll take them to another site. And it's an opt-in just because pe people are on the permanent early voter list does not automatically put them on this tracking mm -hmm. system. So they have to opt in and sign in and you will, g you have to, there's three ways that they can get a message. You're, you're, um, you could either get a text message saying you, that your ballot is being is in the mail or uh, or they can get a voice message it's going to be an automated a voice message or an email so they, they have to also make sure that whatever option that they choose for they need to either give us a telephone number the correct telephone number to get a, a text message or a voicemail or, or an email I need, they need a current email for them to get that that information and the messages are um, the your ballot has been printed your ballot is in the mail, um, and then once they get it, they'll send mail it back to us, and then they'll get a text message, email, or voicemail saying that your ballot has been received, uh, your ballot has been accepted, or your ballot has been rejected. So I'm very excited about that. That's good. That's yeah. good. Is there, uh, let's talk about spoiled ballots maybe, or, or maybe, you know, we lost one or need to apply or something what's the process with that they would just need to call our office the recorder's office um, if, if it was a ballot that they received in the mail they okay. you know for whatever reason they can't find it or whatever they can call us and we will send them uh, another ballot now if I were to go and vote on election day what do I need as far as identification or is there anything like that that I need to bring a current uh, driver's license or an Arizona um, ID is uh, definitely something that we always encourage people to, to bring with them. Uh, make sure that it's current with whatever the voter registration has. Um, they can be, and if they don't know, then, then they could call the recorder's office and find out if their current ID or driver's license matches. Um, if they don't have a, a driver's license or a, uh, an ID, they just need two forms of identification, and those two forms need to have two things. Uh, their name and their address. And the physical address. And th yeah, th their physical right. address okay. in which whatever the recorders happens to have. And they just need two forms of that. Um, it could be a utility bill of some sort, your, your phone bill, your uh, cable bill, you know, something that has their, their name and uh, their current mailing address or physical address. Right. You know, it's one of the things that we have our right is to vote and we have our right to uh, you know, elect people into office, and I think it's one of the great privileges that we have. And we just encourage people to come out, to vote, to participate in this democratic process uh, where we have that opportunity 
to to have a say and we have had some elections here recently that have been decided by very small numbers of, of votes uh, mm -hmm. whether they be overrides whether they be individuals uh, there have been some very small numbers that have made a d decisive vote as to you know, I think it was down, some of them are down to the single digits, aren't they, in a few races, maybe yeah. not much over 20 votes on, on some. So it is a, a definitely, a, every vote is counted and it's mm -hmm. important that everybody try to share in this process. Correct, and it, it came down to 10 votes on one of the uh, school districts just this last 2018. Um, so every vote counts, even though they think it's not. Uh, in your local county elections, every vote counts so please don't think your vote's not going to count because right. it does now we haven't covered absentee ballots if i know i'm going to be out of the country or i'm totally going to be gone how early could i request an absentee ballot okay an absentee ballot is the same thing as an early ballot okay yeah so you can request that any time now there's no no starting point really so you can you can request that now for the presidential preference in uh, March and um, so it, it, it is the same thing as an early ballot 27 days before the election is when we'll start mailing them out okay anything so, else in the recorder's office uh, that we need to be aware of um, uh, I just wanted to say also that um, tracking your ballot that Raylene was talking about, I would encourage voters to sign up for that because especially with this election, the presidential preference election or the presidential election, uh, voters are going to get a lot of mailings from different candidates, different parties, different organizations. and. Two years ago, in 2018, they were so bombarded with mail that, that looks like an official mail from our office, but it's not. And, and some, of those, some of those letters that went out was telling voters, you know, we have not received your early ballot. You know, our records show that you have not mailed it in. Please do so as soon as possible. And voters were calling in saying, I mailed that a long time ago. Why don't you have it? I just got something in the mail that says you don't have it. And we will look it up, and sure enough, we have it. So, so they just need to be careful. So if they, if they really want to make sure, you know, track their ballot, I would sign up for that. Because we have no control over who sends the voters all, that, all those, those mailings. Right, so. right. That's a good point. Very good point. Yeah. Anything else uh, on the elect directive you want to share with us? Well, I, I would just encourage people to sign up to be poll workers. Um, but I do have something that I was asked to you know, bring up that is not election related at all. Sure. But um, we are in the census period of the county and state and everything like that. And so um, there, the county is actually looking for volunteers um, to help with a uh, the, the, the census. They're also looking for somebody who with um, who they feel that that would spearhead this uh, the census program and take that upon themselves and um, uh, get out there and, and get people going on it. And so if, if uh, anybody is interested, they need to call uh, Brian Layton, the assistant county manager at 524 or excuse me 928 524 4000. And I think that's a more than just volu it's a volunteer, but it's also a paid position. And They're there is pay for them. those people who will work on the census. Yes. Uh, it is something that they actually do pay a uh, mm -hmm. fairly good hourly wage uh, as they work the census. And the census is important. And the census is how the county and how the cities are able to determine how many people live in the geographical area and based upon that that's where our funding comes on our state shared revenues as well as some monies to be able to help run the cities and help run the mm -hmm. the counties and so we really encourage every citizen to be counted every been this year it's an online uh, process you can go online and and be counted and so that starts in March and so we just look forward to people getting involved uh, of putting their information on the census and their households so Absolutely. they can count people. That's great. Good point. So 
we didn't get to discuss the Super Bowl because this is going to air midterm, and so <laughs> we already will know the winner by the time this is over. So we don't know if you're a Chief or a 49er fan, but one way or the other, somebody did win and somebody <laughs> lost, just like the election. <laughs> somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose, but we just want you to get out and vote, and we appreciate what you ladies do in this process to make it uh, work in our communities here where everybody's voice is heard. Thank you so much for being with us today and sharing the things that you've shared. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us today on Navajo County Connection, and we look forward to seeing you on our next show. Thank you.